Mary Catherine Herrini Cummings, born as Maria Catalan Herrini, November 7, 1850 November 2, 1940, also known as Big Nose Kate, was a Hungarian-born prostitute and longtime companion and common-law wife of Old West gunfighter Doc Holliday. Early Life Mary Catherine Herrini, also spelled Herrini, Heroni, and Heroni, was born on November 7, 1850 in Pest, Hungary, as the second oldest daughter of Hungarian physician Miklos Herrini. Immigration to the United States of America In 1860, Dr. Herrini, his second wife Katharina, and his children left Hungary for the United States, arriving in New York City on the German ship Bremen in September 1860. Writer Glenn Boyer was the first to state that Kate was descended from nobility and that after her father was appointed personal physician to Emperor Maximilian I of Mexico the family accompanied the monarch's retinue to Mexico. However, in none of his published works did Boyer ever cite a source for these assertions. Patrick A. Bowmaster exposed the fallacy of Boyer's story. The Herini family settled in a predominantly German area of Davenport, Iowa in 1862. Herini and his wife died only three years later, in 1865, within a month of one another. Mary Catherine and her younger siblings were placed in the home of her brother-in-law, Gustav Sisamil, and in 1870 they were left in the care of attorney Otto Smith. The 1870 United States Census records for Davenport, Iowa show Kate's younger sister, 15-year-old Wilhelmina, Wilma, living with and working as a domestic for Austrian-born David Palter and his Hungarian wife Bettina. St. Louis and Dodge City At age 16, Kate ran away from her foster home and stowed away on a riverboat bound for St. Louis, Missouri. Kate later claimed that while she lived in St. Louis she married a dentist named Silas Melvin with whom she had a son, and that both died of yellow fever. No record has been found to substantiate marriage, birth of a child, or the death of either Melvin or the child. United States Census records report that a Silas Melvin lived in St. Louis in the mid-1860s but that he was married to a steamship captain's daughter named Mary Bust. The census also shows that another Melvin was employed by a St. Louis asylum. Since Kate met Doc Holliday in the early 1870s, she may have confused the two and their occupations when recalling the facts later in her life. Researcher Jan Collins states that Kate entered the Ursuline convent but did not remain long. In 1869, she is recorded as working as a prostitute for Madame Blanche Triboli in St. Louis. In 1874, Kate was fined for working as a sporting woman, prostitute, in a sporting house, brothel, in Dodge City, Kansas, run by Nellie Bessie, Ketchum, Herb, James Epps wife. Joins Doc Holliday. In 1876, Kate moved to Fort Griffin, Texas, where in 1877 she met Doc Holliday. Doc said at one point that he considered Kate his intellectual equal. Kate introduced Holliday to Wyatt Earp. The couple went with Earp to Dodge City and registered as Mr. and Mrs. J. H. Holliday at Deacon Cox's boarding house. Doc opened a dental practice by day but spent most of his time gambling and drinking. The two fought regularly and sometimes violently. According to Kate, the couple later married in Valdosta, Georgia. They traveled to Trinidad, Colorado and then to Las Vegas, New Mexico, where they lived for about two years. Holiday worked as a dentist by day and ran a saloon on Center Street by night. Kate also occasionally worked at a dance hall in Santa Fe. By her own account, Doc and Kate met up again with Wyatt Earp and his brothers on their way to the Arizona Territory. Virgil Earp had already been in Prescott before Wyatt persuaded his brothers to move to Tombstone. Holiday was making money at the gambling tables in Prescott, while Kate worked as a prostitute in the upstairs rooms at the Palace Saloon, 
he and Kate parted ways when Kate left for Globe, Arizona, but she rejoined Holiday soon after he arrived in Tombstone. Move to Tombstone Holiday, like his friend Wyatt Earp, was always looking for an opportunity to make money and joined the Earps in Tombstone during the fall of 1880. On March 15, 1881, at 10 p.m., three cowboys attempted to rob a Kinnear and Company stagecoach carrying $26,000 in silver bullion, by the inflation adjustment algorithm, $659,324 in today's dollars, near Benson, Arizona, during which the popular driver Eli Bud Philpot and passenger Peter Rorig were killed. Cochise County Cowboy Bill Leonard, a former watchmaker from New York City, was one of three men implicated in the robbery, and he and Holiday had become good friends. When Kate and Holiday had a fight, County Sheriff Johnny Bean and Milt Joyce, a county supervisor and owner of the Oriental Saloon, decided to exploit the situation. Bean and Joyce plied Kate with alcohol and suggested to her a way to get even with Holiday. She signed an affidavit implicating Holiday in the murders and attempted robbery. Judge Wells Spicer issued an arrest warrant for Holiday. The Earps found witnesses who could attest to Holiday's whereabouts elsewhere at the time of the murders. Kate said that Bean and Joyce had influenced her to sign a document she didn't understand. With the cowboy plot revealed, Judge Spicer freed Holiday. The district attorney threw out the charges labeling them ridiculous. After Holiday was released, he gave Kate money and put her on the stage. Kate returned to Globe for a time, but she returned to Tombstone in October of that year. Gunfight at the OK Corral In a 1939 letter to her niece Lillian Rafferty, Kate claimed that she was in the Tombstone area with Holiday during the days before the shootout. According to Kate, she was with Holiday in Tucson when they attended the San Augustin Feast and Fair in Levin Park during October 1881. On October 20, 1881, Morgan Earp rode to Tucson to request Holiday's assistance with dealing with Cochise County cowboys who had threatened to kill the Earps. She wrote that Holiday asked her to remain in Tucson for her safety, but she refused, and traveled with Holiday and Earp. Kate reminisced in the letter about her stay with Holiday at C.S. Fly's boarding house which bordered the alley where the gunfight at the O.K. Corral took place. Kate accurately described minor details of the shootout. Kate wrote that on the day of the gunfight, a man entered Fly's boarding house with a bandaged head and a rifle. He was looking for Holiday, who was still in bed after a night of gambling. Kate recalled that the man who was turned away by Mrs. Fly was later identified as Ike Clanton, whom City Marshal Virgil Earp had pistol-whipped earlier that day when he found Clanton carrying a rifle and pistol in violation of city ordinances. Clanton's head was bandaged afterward. Virgil Earp had disarmed him earlier that day and told Ike he would leave Ike's confiscated rifle and revolver at the Grand Hotel, which was favored by cowboys when they were in town. Ike testified afterward that he had tried to buy a new revolver at Spangenberger's gun and hardware store on 4th Street but the owner saw Ike's bandaged head and refused to sell him one. Clanton was unarmed at the time of the shootout later that afternoon. Ike testified that he picked up the weapons from William Soule, the jailer, a couple of days later. Author Glenn Boyer disputes that Kate saw the gunfight through the window of the boarding house. According to him also, Kate stated that after Doc Holliday returned to his room, he sat on the edge of his bed and wept from the shock of what had happened during the close-range gunfight. That was awful, Kate claims he said. Just awful. Boyer's work, however, has been rejected by serious scholars. After the OK Corral and later life, Kate is reported to have made trips to Tombstone to see Holiday until he left for Colorado in April 1882. In 1887, Kate traveled to Redstone, Colorado, close to Glenwood Springs, Colorado, to visit with her brother Alexander. 
Some historians have tried to connect Kate and Doc to possible reconciliation attempts between the two. Mary's George Cummings After Doc Holliday died in 1887, Kate married Irish blacksmith George Cummings in Aspen, on March 2, 1890. After working several mining camps throughout Colorado, they moved to Bisbee, Arizona, where she briefly ran a bakery. After returning to Wilcox, Arizona, in Cochise County, Cummings became an abusive alcoholic and they separated. In 1900, Kate moved to Dos Cabezas or Cochise and worked for John and Lulu Rath, owners of the Cochise Hotel. Cummings committed suicide in Cortland, Arizona, in 1915. Kate is enumerated in the 1910 U.S. Census in Dos Cabezas, Arizona, as a member of the home of minor John J. Howard. When Howard died in 1930, Kate was the executrix of his estate. She contacted his only daughter, who lived in Tempe, Arizona, and settled the inheritance. In 1931 the 80-year-old Kate contacted her longtime friend, Arizona Governor George Hunt, and applied for admittance to the Arizona Pioneers' home in Prescott, Arizona. The home had been established in 1910 by the state of Arizona for destitute and ailing miners and male pioneers of the Arizona Territory. It took Kate six months to be admitted, since the home had a requirement that residents must be American citizens. According to the 1935 Bork interview, Kate was owed money by the Howard estate, but the amount owed was not enough to buy firewood through the winter, as Kate had complained in her letters to the governor. She was admitted as one of the first female residents of the home. She lived there and became an outspoken resident, assisting other residents with living comforts. Kate wrote many letters to the Arizona State Legislature often contacting the governor when she was not satisfied with their response. Near the end of her life, several reporters tried to record Kate's life story, her relationship with Doc Holliday and her time in Tombstone. She only talked to Anton Mazonovich and Prescott historian A.W. Bork. Death and Discrepancies in Records Kate died on November 2, 1940 just five days before her 90th birthday, of acute myocardial insufficiency, a condition she started showing symptoms of the day before her death. Her death certificate states that she also suffered from coronary artery disease and advanced arteriosclerosis. Kate's death certificate contained significant discrepancies regarding her parents' names and her birthplace. Although she was born in Hungary, her death certificate states she was born in Davenport, Iowa, to father Marshall H. Michael and mother Catherine Baldwin. The birthplace of both her parents is shown on the certificate as unknown. The superintendent of the Pioneer Home is named as the informant on the death certificate. Kate was buried on November 6, 1940, under the name Mary K. Cummings in the Arizona Pioneer Home Cemetery in Prescott, Arizona. In other media, Big Nose Kate was depicted by Joe Van Fleet in Gunfight at the OK Corral, 1957 film, by Faye Dunaway in Frank Perry's film Doc, 1971, by Joanna Pacula in Tombstone, 1993 film, and by Isabella Rossellini in Wyatt Earp, 1994 film. Carol Montgomery Stone played Big Nose Kate usually referred to as Kate Holliday, in ten episodes in the 1957-1958 season of the ABC-Desilu Western television series The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, with Hugh O'Brien as Wyatt Earp and Douglas Foley as Doc Holliday. Sheena Marsh played Kate Fisher in the 1966 Doctor Who story, The Gunfighters. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.